Hello, my name is Daniel Hebert, and I'm the Academic Chair of Engineering Technologies at NDCC. This presentation is going to go over the details of the electrical and electronics engineering technology programs that we offer at NDCC. I'm going to start a PowerPoint presentation here, share with everyone. So when we look at the electrical and electronics engineering technology programs that we offer at NBCC, they are offered at two different campuses. Uh, we have programs that are offered at the Moncton campus and some that are offered at the St. John campus. And we'll be going through which options are offered at each campus as we move through this particular presentation. First of all, looking at all of the electrical and electronics engineering technology programs, they are all two-year programs. Uh, so for those of you that may not be aware, NBCC's academic year is divided into three terms. There's the fall term, winter term, and spring terms. Uh, the fall term starting in September and ending in uh, mid-December. Uh, that's roughly a 14 to 15 week term. And then there's another term, um, the winter term, which starts in January and goes to about mid-April. It's also 14 to 15 week in duration. And then there's a shorter spring term. Um, which is about seven to eight weeks, which runs from May to April uh, to generally the third week of June. So when you look at the program overall, um, you'll be studying six terms. So three in the first year and three in the second year. So we're gonna have a closer look at the electrical engineering technology offerings that we have or the options that we offer under this uh, program area. The first is the alternate energy system and it's offered at the Moncton campus. The second option that you're able to take is the power distribution option, and it's offered at our St. John campus. For electronics engineering technology, we have three options, two of which are in St. John and the third is in Moncton. So the biomedical systems is offered at the St. John campus. Communication systems is also offered in St. John. And finally, the industrial electronics is offered um, at the Moncton campus. Something that, uh, that comes up a lot when uh, someone is looking at applying to either electrical or electronics engineering technology is that it's, it's very difficult to choose which option. We've just gone over five different options that you can choose from in this program area, and that can be a daunting task for people. So rest assured um, that once you are accepted um, into one of the programs, that there is the possibility of transferring options. So what that means is, you know, if you've decided to sign up for our biomedical uh, systems program um, and you after your first term of study, you realize that, you know, perhaps communication systems may be of more interest to you. Uh, that is certainly something that we can look at in terms of being able to transfer options. Generally, the transfers are done in first year. And of course, they're contingent on a spot being available within that program area. The great thing about these this program area is that the first year is common uh, both for the electrical and electronics engineering technology for the first two terms. Therefore, the, the fall and winter terms are completely the same, no matter if you're in electrical or electronics. However, once we get to the third term of first year, there is a difference between the electrical and electronics engineering technology program. So those are things that are very important to consider if, if uh, a transfer is something that you may be looking at. And that's why we're stating here that the timing of the transfers is important. I would also say that it's important for you to have a discussion uh, with your academic chair before proceeding with an application for uh, an option transfer, just to make sure that everything is in order. In terms of program accreditation, um, in the past, all of our uh, engineering technology programs were accredited with CTAB, the Canadian Technical Accreditation Board. And over the last couple of years, there's been a transition over to a new accreditation board, which is called the uh, Technology Accreditation Canada, or what we call TAC. So we are in the process of transferring our CTAB accreditation over to TAC accreditation. Um, but you know, the, the nice thing about accreditation is that you know that the curriculum will have been reviewed by an accreditation board, which certainly speaks to the rigor of the program that you'll be taking. Now we're going to get into the um, specifics of the different offerings that we have for our programs, uh, starting with the electrical engineering technology power distribution. 
Now, this particular program is offered in St. John, and its focus is on the distribution of power in commercial and industrial settings from the utility service entrance to the final energy utilization devices. So what does that mean in terms of what you'll actually be studying? Within this option, you'll be studying building electrical systems, power systems analysis, protection systems, electrical power generation, rotating electrical machines, motor controls, programmable logic controllers, electrical drafting and design, automation systems, technical writing, mathematics and statistics, project management, safety ethics and quality assurance, computers and applications. There's also a senior technical project. And finally, for this particular option, there is a two week industry practicum or what we call work integrated learning. The second offering that we have for electrical engineering technology is alternate energy systems. That particular option is offered at the Moncton campus and its focus is on the production and control of sustainable energy using sources, sources such as wind, solar, and geothermal. In terms of specific areas of study, naturally there's courses for um, in the area of renewable energy. So there are courses for solar, wind, and also geothermal, but you still have the core electrical engineering courses such as building electrical systems, power systems analysis and protection, electrical power generation, rotating electrical machines, programmable logic controllers, electrical drafting and design, power electronics, technical writing, mathematics and statistics, project management, safety ethics and quality assurance, computers and applications, and as all of our engineering technology programs, uh, we also have a senior technical project. So now we're going to move on to the electronics engineering technology offerings that we have, starting with biomedical. The biomedical option is offered at the St. John campus, and its focus is on the installation and maintenance of electronic and computer controlled equipment used in healthcare settings. So what does that mean in terms of areas of study? You're going to study clinical engineering, anatomy and physiology, DC machines, sensors, microcontrollers and embedded systems, programmable logic controllers, electronic communications, automation systems, linear circuits and filters, data communications and networking, energy storage, mathematics and statistics, project management, safety ethics and quality assurance, a senior technical project and technical writing. Moving on to the second offering that we have for electronics engineering technology, communication systems. It's offered at the St. John campus and its focus is on the production of wireless, digital, data and or fiber optic communication systems. The courses that you'll study will focus on electronic communication systems, modulation, antennas, fiber optics, sensors, microcontrollers and embedded systems, programmable logic controllers, automation systems, linear circuits and filters, data communications and networking, energy storage, mathematics and statistics, project management, safety ethics and quality assurance, a senior technical project, and technical writing. Moving on to the third and final option that we offer under electronics engineering technology, industrial. This particular option is offered at the Moncton campus and its focus is on the installation and maintenance of electronic and computer controlled systems used in industrial settings. So what does that mean in terms of areas of study? You'll be studying power systems, power electronics, rotating electrical machines and controls, sensors, microcontrollers and embedded systems, programmable logic controllers, electronic communications, automation systems, linear circuits and filters, data communications and networking, energy storage, mathematics and statistics, project management, safety ethics and quality assurance, a senior technical project, and technical writing. So that's a brief summary of the five major programs and options that we offer under the electrical and electronics engineering technology programs. Now we're going to talk about uh, some of the general information that relates to all of those program areas, starting with uh, the laptop requirement. So it is uh, important for you to know that if you are applying to one of these programs, that a laptop will be required for your studies and it will be used throughout uh, the two years of your studies. We will provide some of the software tools that you require that are specific to the industry, but you do need to have 
um, your own laptop and specifications will be provided for that machine to make sure that you have the right laptop uh, for your studies here. Next, we're going to uh, just go over the admission requirements for uh, all uh, five of the uh, program options that we discussed, and that's Profile I. So this is basically what you need to be able to apply uh, to one of these programs. So uh, you need a high school diploma or a, an adult high school diploma or GED uh, diploma of high school equivalency. Uh, from a mathematics perspective, very important skill to have for these programs. You'll be required to have either uh, Pre-Calculus 110 or Geometry and Applications in Mathematics uh, 112 and Functions and Relations 112. You also need to have a minimum of two science courses, including one which must be either biology, chemistry, or physics. Now, if you're still in high school and making some choices about which courses you should be taking, it would be our recommendation that you take a physics course if it is offered at your high school. Um, but if it is not mandatory, we have many uh, students that come to us having not studied any physics at all, and that's okay. We will start with an introductory physics course. However, um, when you have the choice, um, it is recommended that you take a physics course if that it is at all possible for you. Okay, so the next thing, and, th and this comes up a lot, obviously, when uh, you're trying to make a, a career choice is, you know, what are the employment prospects? So looking at electronics and electrical engineering, um, technologists are in very, very high demand. From our graduates that we have at NBCC, over 90% of our graduates will find work in the related field of study. And that is certainly true for our engineering technology programs. They are in very, very high demand. In terms of uh, some examples of employers, and again, this is simply examples. There are many, many more than what we have listed here. Um, but there is NB Power, Bell Alliance, Nav Canada, the Irving Companies, Stantec, and many, many more companies that hire quite frequently from our programs. In fact, we've recognized over the last uh, probably 10 years or so that employers are becoming more and more aggressive in terms of recruiting our graduates, where they, you know, they will reach out to students um, and faculty and uh, you know they, they want to come in and be able to speak to our students before they become graduates uh, because they are eager to find um, you know the future employees of their companies so from an employment perspective engineering technology is a great great area to be So in terms of career, as I just mentioned, uh, engineering technologists are definitely in very high demand. Uh, one of the benefits of graduating from our programs is that you'll be eligible uh, for professional certification under the New Brunswick Society of Certified Engineering Technologists and Technicians, or MBSET, once you've completed a sufficient number of years of relevant uh, industry experience. So that means that you can get the professional uh, certification, you can become a professional technologist uh, upon graduation and completing the requirements from an experience perspective uh, from the uh, society. So why should you come to MBCC? Why do we think that this is a great choice for you? Number one, we have very highly qualified faculty that have valuable industry experience. That is the strength of what MBCC offers, is that our faculty have relevant industry experience. Uh, on top of that, our curriculum, as we've mentioned before, our curriculum uh, is uh, accredited. So that means that the industry and also the accreditation bodies uh, regularly review our, our, our curriculum to make sure that it's up to standards and meets the needs of industry. That is something that is very valuable. Finally, the hands-on learning. This is the MBCC advantage. So all of our programs include a significant amount of hands-on learning, which our industry partners and future employers um, really, really appreciate because when they hire a graduate from our programs, they know that they are ready to hit the ground running. Finally, um, if you have any questions about the programs or the application process, uh, we recommend that you would book a meeting with an NBCC recruitment advisor. Uh, you can do that by email to collegeworks at nbcc.ca and they will be able to answer any questions that you have about the application process, uh, about our programs, 
and uh, they can even put you in contact uh, with faculty members or academic chairs that can help you along the way to make the best decision for you. Finally, in terms of application, um, how do you apply? Very, very simple. All you need to do is go to our website, www.nbcc.ca, and click on the I'm ready to apply tab, and we'll uh, get you to our application filter. So if you have any questions at all, by all means, please reach out to our recruitment advisors, and they'll be more than happy to answer any other questions that you have. Have a great day.